Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome back to James and Flav for now. Uh, we are back. We've had our reset from last week, and this week we are ready to talk. Lots of things have changed since last week. First of all, Flav, we have mm. so many bloody patrons, and every single one of them has got a nickname. That's what happens when you become a patron. We are now up to 300 patrons. Thank you very, very much for all those getting involved. The likes of Minecraft Pickle, Theo Anderson King, the ghostwriter... Oliver Orchard, we've got Alan Sullivan, Sergeant Sullivan, was it Slaughter? No, sorry. Oh, so, so, Sergeant Slaughter. We've got Matt Sargent, Sergeant Slaughter. Everyone's got a nickname. Oliver Beerhoff, also known as his real name, Oliver Klozoff. Not all, we, we, won't, we won't go into the nicknames of all of them because not all of them are very favourable. Some of them are quite, you know. But if you, if you want to find out some of the more horrendous ones yeah. that we've come up with, then uh, uh, give us yeah. some of your money. Pedo Pete. As I mean, well. I, I'm not sure if this is branded pod, isn't it? Oh yeah, sorry, it's just a nickname. Uh, this a nickname. is a, not actually a pod. <laughs> this is a branded pod, indeed. We have a sponsor today. We are delighted to say that this episode of Jaffin is sponsored by the lovely boys and girls at Manscaped. Hell oh, yeah! Yes. Oh yes. Uh, happy New Year's from all our friends over at Manscaped. Uh, the ball has officially dropped. But that does not mean that you have to drop the ball on your balls. No, it's, that's good. Yeah, it's time, <laughs> it's time you bring sexy back in 2022. I've always said, you've been saying that for weeks now. And step your game up with Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. Join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped to, <laughs> to help bring in the new year with the right tools for the job. Go to manscaped.com. There's a link in the description and use the code ALLCOT20 for 20% off and free shipping. It's a new year. It's a new you. And that means... Jim. That means what, Flav? No pubes. No pubes. Jim, why is this... You, I mean, you, this is so close to you. Like, this... this. The, I mean, so, you know, sometimes you get, like... You get offers of branding and something, but, but this is perfect for you, isn't it? Why is it perfect for you, James? I think pubes has been a long-running um, discussion in my mind, you know? And No, uh, no, I, no. Why sorry, is it perfect for you, me. James? Yes. Right. I've, well, I, I think. It's why important. is it more difficult for? You, why is it more difficult for you <laughs> right. than me I'm to sort out? My... I'm not doing this. <laughs> no, look, I, I, in terms of value for money, it's more value for money for me than it would be for the, the normal man. Let's <laughs> leave it there. All right. Let's leave it there. What I do like <laughs> is that you look. I've I've got my the reason I'm not able. To, I can't show you all the bits and pieces because I got sent one and. They're all in use, including uh, the the bag that you get. Do you know what I like actually the bit? What's it? The um. So there's a couple of really nice things. So one's the um the crop preserver, which is good. I have actually used that. It gives you yeah. a lovely little tingle. Um, and <laughs> what I love here is that obviously the guys at Manscaped are, help us with some of the bits, and then we can talk about it ourselves. But I like this little line from them. They say uh, it's an anti chafing ball deodorant, which is do it, which does. Do it makes you just feel a bit better down there. It gives you a little tingle and moisturizer. You already put deodorant on your armpits. Why are you not putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? I mean, it's a harsh visual, but it's true, isn't it, Flap? Yeah. Well, the whole thing is. I mean, look, it's it's been a long time coming, hasn't it? That that <laughs> that um that that the, this is a region that should be catered for, and it isn't easy. It's not easy. Like balls are. Wrinkly, ultimately, unless you're one of the gift, you know, the the lucky few who have small balls, small, small, <laughs> small <laughs> smooth balls. I meant, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's a tricky thing, and no matter how close and careful you go with your typical razor, which aren't suited for the job, mm. you just can't get it right. And you know, as a gift, not only to yourself, but to your loved one, you know, your your partner or the many partners, maybe. It's just you feel more confident, don't you, once it's all nice, trim and proper. And these, the yeah. tools that Manscaped would give you are perfectly designed for that. There is nothing else out there as far, I'm, as, far as I'm aware. Well, let, let me tell you about the product. This... <laughs> let me tell you about the product, Flap. Well, then. Yeah. Well, I mean, also, just to say, we've got our patrons in the chat right now, by the way. And don't take our word for it. Scottish Taco 03 says the crop preserver is elite. You know. And he wouldn't yes. lie. So uh, I know a lot of, yeah, no, <laughs> words, of words of Scottish Taco 03. Um, look, 03. you know, we, we'd all love a six pack. 
in 2022 and you can get yourself a six pack for your balls the manscape performance package 4.0 contains six essential tools for the ultimate below the waist grooming routine inside the performance package 4.0 you'll find a signature lawnmower 4.0 of course this electric trimmer is designed to trim hair on loose skin <laughs> the advanced skin safe technology reduces cuts and nicks on your delicate nuts it also comes equipped with a 4000k led spotlight that will shine a light to the promise land of 2022 you can um, see you can see every nook and cranny of your balls and ass with this 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 light it's incredible yeah. and if that's not worth <laughs> it i don't know what it is um so ben yeah M, ben M, he says I, i've nicked a wrinkle more than once it's not fun <laughs> thank you there you go so you got your ball toner spl- uh, spray you got your ball, uh, crop preserver you get the bag uh, you get the refined cologne, which offers a light yet masculine pleasing fragrance. And most importantly, you can get 20% off plus free shipping using the code ALLCOT20. So there you have it. Thank you very much to Manscaped for sponsoring the podcast. Uh, great times for all. And f- honestly, f- I f- I f- I f- thanks for sending the stuff because now my balls are absolutely beautifully yeah. trimmed. They are a, just Would you say a, a your balls are thanking you? Specimen. Would you say your balls are thanking you? They are. Oh, well, they're go. thanking Manscaped for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, right, we move on. It's not on. just your balls. It's other bits as well, just so just so you know. Yeah, good point. Um, yeah, good. Not many quotes of the week last week. <laughs> Um, let's dive into it. There, we, there, is, there will be football chat. I know a lot of people have been a bit concerned about the quantity of football chat in recent weeks. But, I, you know, I, do you know what I think? I was thinking about this. And I think, I don't think you're having to talk about football as much as you used to. Are you still doing the 90 min thing? No. No, I don't think you're... I think what, this is, is this something... I feel, I, like like you're fresh, about football? I feel like you're a bit fresher because you're not, you're not having to defend your corner at every turn from outside influences. Do you know That's what I mean? That's a great point. Yeah, yeah, and obviously you had hold the L as well, which was which was a similar situation where you had to literally defend. Whereas, you, yeah, you're right, and plus, you know, it's it's, it's more exciting now because I'm not have to having to watch Jose Mourinho football and Nuno football, Nuno football. A, a different brand of football. I just, I mean, well, well should we do it right now? Because uh, I mean, let's, 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 let's give what? the signal. Let's give the signal. I, 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 what I will just say, guys, is we have got uh, an exciting podcast here. We've got two new bits, and Footballers Wangs is returning. Oh my good lord! Yeah. <laughs> it's per- on. only on a Manscaped sponsored podcast. It makes complete sense. It was meant to be. Um, can you, so can you just wangs. break down very quickly, just for my own amusement, um, what mm-hmm. football wangs, Footballers Wangs is about? Footballers Wangs is a bit that we did probably about three years ago now that probably isn't ageing well, but we might be able to just sneak it in on the podcast this week where uh, you've seen the appendage of an elite sportsman. And Yeah, uh, have you oh seen a, a, a sportsman's willy out in the wild? If so, let us know, because yeah. we are desperate to hear it. <laughs> oh, I am, I am for one desperate, desperate yeah. to hear your stories. Of famous willies. Yeah, yeah, we're gagging to hear it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand why anybody wouldn't want to hear those stories. Indeed, uh, we've got Gerard is the type of guy. Uh, I've got a guess who he supports. Um, we've got a best team to support. We've got a possible two possible new bits: one tame anger and one life's unanswered questions answered. Um, and so much. Yes, I love that as well. That's good. And we've got some Flames advice. Don't let me forget Flames advice this week because we said we were going to do it. Um, West Brom Bob. We've got, we've got, we need to get on that. Um, but football chat, football chat. Okay. We uh, well before we go into the football chat, and we will we're, we're just just one more mention for football, footballers wangs. We do have a song. <laughs> People are going mad in the in the chat. The patrons are going mad saying, "If you sing the song, or we'll we leave." Right, so when it comes, I will prompt you to sing the song. Jim. Okay, for one one time only. Why not? Um, so, do you know what's amazing? Right, I was doing the comments, reading through the comments last week, and listening to a bit of the podcast, and you were. Not happy with Spurs. You were like, I'm I'm angry at the moment with Spurs. I need a bit of time. I think we're gonna get past this, but I'm not best pleased. Fast forward yeah. a week, Flav. Yeah. And no. there is a spring in your buttocks because of course we can't see your step, but I can see it bouncing up and down. Spurs with uh made history yesterday. I think it was ninety-four minutes they were losing a game. Mm-hmm. Bang bang, goal goal, Bergwine, Bergwine, Spurs are back. 
Berg Van. Um, <laughs> mate, Berg we look. Apparently, a court, the song goes Tottenham get battered everywhere they go. But we do we really because mm. we're unbeaten in nine games under Conte. We've won six and drawn three. That doesn't sound like a team that gets battered everywhere they go. Actually, well, actually, unbeaten. Sounds like Conte is unbeaten in the league. I think what where that really kind of dejected feeling came from last week was obviously Chelsea. He was losing to Chelsea twice in a week. Yeah, and you were miles and off as well. When... Last week we were miles off. Yeah, we're not. Maybe we're not. We're, I mean, we are technically on paper miles off, and you would expect this weekend that that a similar test awaits Spurs. Mm. But um, so ninety minutes of football is ninety minutes of football, Jim, and, and two games are never the same, and it doesn't mean anything. Anyway, what I want to talk about. <laughs> is... <laughs> Often, often like that's what that's how I feel like when I go when I, when I hear people talk about football, I, and you know, blah, 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 all that shit. Blah, blah, Give me the blah, blah, insight, Flav. Give me the insight. What's happening here? Something happening? Yeah, there's something that's happening the minute you arrived, right? We knew that. Um, we just need we need we, we need to back. I don't, I don't want to say all the shit we said I've said before, but some, blah, some, blah, 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 blah. What I do want to say is. Poor old Leicester, eh? Mm. They were giving it. They were giving it all game. They absolutely hate us. Honestly, <laughs> Leicester yeah, City are on the they are on the list, by the way. They're on the list. They're with West Ham. They're with Arsenal. They're with Chelsea, Liverpool, and Leicester are also on the list of teams that I want to see awful things happen to on the football pitch, obviously. Um so I I think um what because they? I what, think the fact they that they would... defy the odds. Because they defy the odds yeah. and won a title. Well, you just... bottled that title. Is that what that is? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Exactly that. Yes. Exactly yeah, that. Yeah. Well, that's out of order from Leicester. They shouldn't have done that. No, they shouldn't have done that. And also, they but they they love the fact that they've done that and they rub it into our faces. Mm. Well, it was the song they sung about two horse it's third in a two horse race. That's all good. That's all good. But the last time we played you at your dump, what was it? Four <laughs> two last year. Dump. Three two this year, <laughs> dump. It is a dump. <laughs> it's so not a dump. Yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah Leicester can get it. Mm. You Leicester played well as well. Get it. You did play well. We we. It was a travesty when Madison scored that second goal. A mm. travesty. No greater travesty has there ever been in football. No greater injustice. No, we we. It's clicking. It's starting to click. We're seeing players and sit a system that is evolving. Um, that three-five-two will be Tottenham's formation going forward under under Conte. Undoubtedly, our go-to formation will be three-five-two. Uh, so I did it very succinctly this time. Yeah, well done. I'm foundering around. A two, Thank you very much. Got... Two-four-six. <laughs> yeah, go on. Four-three-six. No, a three-four-four. Four. No, that's too many players. But, um, yeah, so that yeah, three-five-two uh, with Kane and someone else beside him up top. You know, you saw when Bervan came on and made those runs. Certainly, the second one was that was based on the fact that we had two forwards, um, and look, that wasn't a team full of exciting talent. No, in Dombele, right? There, there was there was very little flair. It was actually quite a functional side. You had Emerson Royale got pulled for Doherty, and I have been I have been absolutely caning Doherty all, all season. Had an incredible game. Maybe as a right wing back, there is a player there. The way I mean, he played for Wolves, yeah, for Wolves, that was kind of his role, wasn't it? Not. He's not a right back, hundred percent not a right back, but a right wing back, different role. His delivery is so much better than Emerson's. Can anyway, I? You know, um, you, you know, you keep yes. going mad about Oliver Skip. Our oh, mate, what player? Do you know who's more important? And every time he plays, I think you play better, Mister Winks. Who? Harry no, Winks. he's not more important. No, I think he's good. He, I think I'm, he moves no, the ball forward. Hey. I like his passing better than Skip. So does Skip. No, but. I mean, look, we we can disagree. Okay. Um, I like your opinion because mm. essentially you're bigging up another Spurs player. So I'm enjoying this, Jim. Keep going, but but um, I would say Skip is probably along along with Kane and Laurie, our most important player. What am I? I, I okay, right. You, I, I, you, I'm going to watch you, the game. I'm going to watch the game. You will Chelsea. get there, Jim. I'll get there. Will I? Okay. All right. Well, uh, I'll, let's. I'll, you'll, I'll you'll try and eventually. stay on top of that because I I'm just not I'm not there yet. I don't. I still I'm still like. Okay. Do you need Do you need him and Hoiberg? 
and Winks when Winks can do yeah, something different. The... Hoiber can offer something different as well. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Skip was doing. Skip was doing. Skip was asked to do play a, be the attacking threat in those three yesterday. He was playing a completely different role and did it fantastically. The boy, mm. Jimbo, the boy can do everything. Lucas Moura looks good as well. Is there something in there, isn't there? I, I think he's. Um, he looks like he's not ejaculated for about three weeks. And he's just up for it. Do you know what I mean? He's just like, give me the ball. I want to run. <laughs> something there. I don't know. I Mate, well. uh, like foot, whether you're a Spurs fan or fan of, of um, any football club, whatever, those last minute winners are magical. And everybody's, every, anyone watching this has has experienced that and knows what it's all about. Um, there was a lad in the, in the away end who broke his nose uh, during the celebration. He's just claret. I saw everywhere. that. I saw that. That's yeah. class. That's a good, that's a kind of scar you yeah. want, isn't it? That's good. I yeah. Like yeah. Bergen... Can I just read one more thing before we move on? Yeah, go on. He is bringing a winning mentality. Who Spurs is, are no on, longer soft this? with who's Antonio this? Conte. Who's saying this? I'm, look, this isn't this isn't me saying this. I know. I know. These are the words of Peter Crouch. Peter Crouch. <laughs> <laughs> and he should know. Yeah. He should know. He's won it all. He should know. Mm. Yeah, it's exciting. If we if we beat if we beat if like I mean like, this is massive if like we we've got a result at Chelsea once in the last twenty years, right? If we get a result at Chelsea. A draw would be fine, but if we manage to somehow win, the whole narrative around Tottenham and, moreover, the top four changes completely. It's already shifting towards us, right? Because of our games in hand, we're above Arsenal with a game in hand, and we're playing. Can't them. get third, can you? No. Can't get third, surely. I mean, look, look. If we if we I beat mean, Chelsea, we'd be five points behind them with four games in hand. You do the math. Can we? Yeah. Can we? Maybe. I mean, why not? But if I we mean, lose different area all together. I mean, you well. can't. You can't. But could you? Can, <laughs> <right>. can we? <laughs> and then so. this is in a season, right? This is... When, we've got to remember when Conte took over Spurs, we lost four on the bounce, conceded 12 goals and scored one. Do you know what I love? Same team, same players. I love that you've been battered by them twice, but just, just the fact that you've... Snuck a win in the way that you've stuck it has completely changed your energy and everyone's energy towards you. I that's such a beautiful thing about football that literally like that it can be yeah. it can be it can be gone and go like you're the best now. But again, looking at that table, draw, win, draw, win, win. Is that good? Looks like it is. Chelsea, win, draw, draw, loss, draw. Not as good. These are the facts. That's good. These are the facts. <laughs> they, um uh, uh, and and uh, finally, just on Tottenham, this this is with a centre back three of Sanchez, Dyer, and Tanganga. We're missing two, our first two centre backs, for, for, you know, in Dyer and um, in Dyer and especially Romero, who was regarded as the best defender in 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 in, uh, in Italy last year, and he's played six games for Spurs. So there's no reason why we shouldn't be hopeful. Is all can I win the maybe not for third, but fourth. Um... Chelsea, do you know as well, like the feeling around Chelsea is really, um, something's not right there, is it? Something's not right. It's all a bit, it's all a bit tetchy. They were and so it, good against Spurs, though. That's the only I know. thing I'd say about that. They were so good. But there's something very tetchy there. It, it's yeah, it's Luka, waiting to... Lukaku and Ziyech yeah. wanted to kill each other, didn't they? Well, uh, yeah, sort of. T- Tuchel as well, other. yeah. And he didn't celebrate. And Tuchel went, well, I haven't got a problem. It, it it could get very snide very quickly. Very quickly. Because this is Chelsea Football Club. This is what they do. They wait yeah. till January. They fall off a cliff. And then they go, oh, this manager's not good anymore. Despite being... I heard a, a channel, a channel that I respect massively. You <laughs> blame the board. You <laughs> blame the board. It's like, well, if you're going to recruit this way, then w- of course we're not going to like... T- a challenge and i was like what what do you mean like, what does he mean who who was it i'm not saying who it was it all was, right because i like the i like the channel and i go to the channel and i watch the channel because it's good that's they, that's, but they went, that's oh, madness <laughs> it's madness isn't it you spend, yeah like what you could have got what you could do with chelsea you could go what we didn't truly know was how important the wing backs were for chelsea and you've lost those two you know, in terms of Chilwell and Reese James, and the two that you've got in place of them, kind of put it out of joint a little bit because Aspilicueta's steady, but he's not your 
2022 modern exciting fullback and Alonso is a flat track bully a little bit I think struggles against the better teams um but to say that they've not got the depth <laughs> it's just like Madness. and it's the and it's the, and it's the board <laughs> well, like, mm. <laughs> you've got literally got the best the, the best of, you and City I mean fundamentally a brand which probably is in terms of what he provides the best chairman in the Premier League because he just will spend it's no issue for him. So for you to criticise a board, I don't know what you want. If you don't want a, a chairman who will buy you any player you want, then what do you want? Yeah, it's a really well-run club. It's a really so, well-run. Apart, from, apart pitch, from the ruthlessness, which which is now like uh, incredibly embedded in that football club. But, you know, you swap a manager out... You, you know, you take out a legend of your club that you could give time that you know is going to work hard, you know is going to develop as a manager. You give up on that, you win the Champions League. So, like, <laughs> you know, it's too, it's a bit too late for all that. You can't go you're off not, the board. You're not, I don't, you, you're, you're not allowed to criticise your club six months after winning a Champions League. Whilst, you whilst, can't, champ- you're, whilst Champions of Europe, yeah, it's not allowed. Whilst being Champions of Europe and having only lost three games in 23 this season. I like this. If I- you're a fan criticising them, what you have no idea what it's like to follow a normal football club then. You can't. Because you're mad if you're criticising Roman Abramovich given everything he's done for Chelsea and the multi- everything, every the crux of every bit of success Chelsea has had in the last since he took over in the 15 years ago, whatever it was, has come from him and his ideas and, and, and his willingness to invest. We're not going to the political side of this because there are reasons why he behaves the way he does. But the fact is, you as, as fans benefit from it. For you to criticize him, not criticize him about all the, all the other stuff, but criticize him because of his recruitment. He's insane. <laughs> Spending more. And and yeah, like but you've got two players there that have won like numerous titles with you. Yes, maybe they're a little bit leggy, but like just like take a breath. Um you don't deserve it. You don't well, deserve it. I think that's a good bit though. Um unwritten rules in football. Rule number one. You can't complain about your board. <laughs> If you're champions, champions of Europe. If you're champions of Europe. <laughs> That's brilliant. That Unwritten brilliant. rule number one. Louis, write that down. Rule number one. Yeah, Louis, can you write that? So we are going to, yeah, we're going to establish the unwritten rules of football. Rule number one, you cannot blame your board if you are champions of Europe. <laughs> and send in your, your own unwritten rules in the comments below. I'd love to see them. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and you and within the last four months, you've gone mad about Cobham, <laughs> and your and your like your kids that you've brought through, and you've also spent ninety five million on a striker. Unwritten rules. Um, you've got you've got a player in Gallagher <laughs> who, is... and you, yeah, and you're sending fucking world class footballers around the globe to learn Gallagher's, more. Yeah, Gallagher's like ceiling is un. I I, I can't tell you how good a player he's going to be, right? And he's not even... You send him out alone. He's not good enough for you. Look, you've got everything. Shut up. Yeah. And Brogia's at Southampton. Liveramento's at Southampton. Lamptey's at Brighton. Could have had them all if you wanted to. I mean, maybe that's... Could have had them all. Maybe that is the board. Shouldn't have sold him. Shouldn't have sold him. Maybe, yeah. Maybe it's... Look, 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 and, and, yeah, exactly. I'm, the only one criticism you, you might say is that um, the, the, the problems with the chemistry in the squad, there seem to be, there seems to be, is that when you do buy a lot of egos, a lot of top top players, actually getting them to mould is is a, is a challenge in itself. And I agree. you know, I, typically City, as much as they do spend money, don't buy. It doesn't seem like they buy. It seems like the people they buy. <laughs> I thought you froze mold. there. I thought you froze there. I thought the oh, camera froze. Because <laughs> <laughs> I paused so. so... <laughs> Um, they seem to buy into a system, whereas Chelsea sort of seemingly bought individuals. And Tuchel's a great manager for getting everything out of it. And just the fucking the fact you've drawn a few games means that the world's ending is is unbelievable. I think they're yeah, there's still a cup. Tell you where the world is sort of ending. Man United. I know they won yesterday, but they were really they were really fortunate to win. They got absolutely smashed to pieces in the first, first half. First half, yeah, true, true. Um, and Ronaldo, he's... I have got it on it here. I've got two other quick talking points about football, then we'll call it a day. Um Suarez, right. Suarez to Villa. I, this is hilarious. Luis Suarez. Luis Suarez could be going to Villa apparently in the summer. His contract ends at Atletico Madrid. Is Gerard trying to sign up every ex every player that he's yeah. is he trying to keep himself young? 
Is that what he's trying to do here? Like, is Jordan yeah, Henderson well, next? If they can play, technically, he could probably still have a, get his boots on. Yeah, Jordan Henderson. Um, Suarez is in the twilight of his career in the most extreme, right? I'd be intrigued to see what he can... Uh, it's dangerous, isn't it? You, you, you know, well, if he comes, he's going to go from from La Liga to Premier League, which is hectic. The Premier League is hectic at the very least, let's say that. And yeah, he is a little bit older. And it's basically, he'd be going, Danny Ings, I don't really rate you. Danny Ings would be out the door. He hasn't had a great... He hasn't had a great... Um... He hasn't. I guess the team's not really built f- for him. They're trying to find no. a way with him. So it'd be he's, interesting I'm just well. looking now. He's he's 34. He will be 35 in three or four days. By the time he gets in, he's going to be pushing, and he sort of gets up and running, he'd be pushing 36. It kind of feels like the signing Spurs would have made 10 years ago. I guess the one thing you could do is, like, you know, great like leader and all those things, and maybe he understands that he's not going to play every single game, but, like, great, incredible for depth, like, incredible for depth. And he, he, I guess he gives you something, like, he gives you, he's a, like, he's a, like, he's a scumbag, isn't he? But he's, like, a winner. He's like, yeah, yeah. He, a bit he, like that energy um, would rub Ran- off. At Rangers, they had Morelos, who's like, yeah, good yeah. finisher, a bit of a knob. That might be of use. But he's your, he's, um, he's, he's on, like, if he plays for you, he kind of, he's your knob, isn't he? <laughs> like, he's yeah, fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally, totally. Like, who is it, the player we had? Do we used to say, like, if he didn't play for Spurs, like, Deli Alley back in the day, if he didn't play for Spurs, well, I'd have hated his guts. Yeah, yeah, like you know, when, yeah, he, when he was Savage like, the... is one of those. Like, there's lots yeah. of midfielders like that. Yeah, I, I think... actually, with a I'm bit not of comparing hindsight. Suarez to Savage, just to be clear. <laughs> I just so, with a hind, yeah, but the mentality generous. of like, I'm this is what I'm going to do to influence the game, and I don't give a shit what people think. That's beneficial if it's for your club. Um, I, I, the more I think about it, the more I, I think it's a, it would be a good signing. Not, it's not, he's not going to lead you to a, a title challenge because of his age, and he's probably going to be playing restrictive, but. He's not bad to have someone like that around the club as a foil to Ollie Watkins or, you know, yeah, it's a good signing if they can get him on a free. Yeah, I'd be intrigued to know what, what the sort of play here is from Gerard in terms of like, is it it's like a one-year deal? Look, I think you've got one year left and you then go to America. It might be something like that. Because I know into Miami are after him as well. Um, oh, yeah, I think it's a... Uh... I don't I mean, see the not? problem with if... him. Yeah, it's a wages thing. That's the only thing. It's like, are his wages going to be absurd? Like, if they're absurd, I'd... then that's a bit silly because you could yeah, develop don't... a player instead. I don't think, um... or they can get him on loan. I don't. I... You might. I mean, he's he's earned more money than he can probably spend. So maybe he's like, this this could be fun playing with Gerard again. I know Gerard. I know Coutinho. There's an, there's like an exciting movement and buzz around the club. Might be a positive thing for him, especially like to have. To be involved in a big, in, in in a club that feels like it's pulling in the right direction towards the very end of your career might be a nice way to to do it. I, mean, I don't know if you saw Jermaine Defoe talking about his time at Rangers. Yeah, um, I like Jermaine Defoe. I like. Oh, he's lovely. He's, he's, he's lovely, lovely, isn't he? Yeah, good. Yeah, and he was just saying like he's how 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 much he loved the last two year two three years at Rangers and how all the lads that you know they helped him like win his first title in his career and he's getting emotional about it like that. He wouldn't be on huge money there at Rangers, but that wasn't his motivation, was it? His motivation was to go and play and be a win part title. of something yeah, that, yeah, and, win, yeah. and win something and be a part of it. And, uh, sure, and that's the, what he got. So... The balance of that reminds me very much of Queen's Park Rangers at the moment. Okay. Because uh, if I can, um, we are massive at the moment. And the reason we're massive is because of that little balance between like, we've got like, oh, Albert Adomo is like 33. He broke the record for the most championship games by a player this at, at the weekend. Or played consecutively or, or in consecutive, total. No, like he's got 456 just in the championship. Like his whole career has just been in the championship. Loves it. And he loves QPR. He loves QPR. Oh, is this the guy who signed and, and he was, how happy he was to sign yeah, for Yeah, he's a QPR oh, okay. fan. And then Charlie Austin as well, who scored the winner. Who like at, at, against West Brom last week? Someone actually, there was a comment from someone which I thought was wicked. Where is it? Um, Sam G, I'm going to QPR versus West Brom this week with my mate just to ensure that in the slight chance they go up, that I've been there to see part of the journey. What a game that you went to, Sam! Great decision, well done. What happened? I didn't we're, check it out. So we're playing West Brom. They're fourth. We're fifth. 
they are, have all this Premier League talent, supposedly. They should be blowing us away. And they're pressing and they're pressing. And we're going, do we just lump it forward? No, let's be brave. Let's be brave. Can we play? Can we suck them in and then get them? Well, we're pushing, we're pushing, we're pushing. Charlie, you were chucked out by West Brom. Would you like to come on and score? Yes, I would. And he does, and he comes on and scores the winner in a tough 1-0 win where our centre-back gets pushed into a hoarding. He's bleeding. Does he come off? No, he doesn't. He goes, strap it around my head now and let the blood gently soak through so it looks better for the pitchers at the end. And, and they win 1-0. And that's QPR. Um, that's QPR that is, right now. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. And and you know what? That, 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 that snake, that bastard, Furlong, ex-QPR, isn't he? Playing for West Brom. Made a bad decision, hasn't he? He's made a bad, bad decision. Bad decision. We'll Where are in league? Where are they in league? Where are they in league? Below us. That's all I know. Below you, exactly. We could, there, there's a possibility. There is a possibility. Hang in there, just guys. a couple <laughs> of things about what you just said. Go on. They haven't got Premier League talent, have they, really? Who? West Brom. They've got a lot of Premier League players. I mean, they might have played in the Premier League, but that's why they're, in, they're now playing in the Championship. They're not... They're not Anyway, that's still, a, good a, result. It doesn't feel like a wrinkle we needed to, you know, <laughs> touch it for too long. And, and Dunn, your centre-back. Mate, he is... is the nuts. He's great. Mate, the whole back line are doing really well. And they're brave. They're so brave. Oh, great. Jimmy Dunn. Jimmy Dunn. Got, hey. Brought in David Marshall on an emergency loan, 36, and he's playing like bloody George Campos. Fantastic stuff. <laughs> um, something's happening. You see, something is happening. Something is definitely happening. Something is happening. Uh, one, one final thing about football, unless it's something else, right? Uh, well, yeah, so we just Ronaldo. in a sentence, Ronaldo behaviour. Is that what you want to talk about? It, sort of. It, okay. Ronaldo behaviour. I mean, it's Ronaldo, right? So you, I'm not surprised by that. Um, I don't think Man United is going to be his final club. I think he's going to go on somewhere else. But more point, how odd is Ragnick? Like the shit he comes out of his mouth. Like, it's like you think, oh, maybe you should manage the situation a bit better. Why was you he not think? Well, um, he has, he's just been super honest, I guess, which is why it's so weird. He, he was talking about, um, you know, Martial saying he didn't, he didn't want to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Martial yeah. said, I would never not want to play. But my point is, it might have been true. But why, what, what could he have possibly got out of engineering that situation? He just says strange things about Ronaldo coming off. Yeah, well, we lost. We were two up, two nil up, so we had to change things so that we yeah. didn't that didn't happen again. Fine, but if in you're managing relationships, <laughs> not saying we had to take Ronaldo off because he didn't want to lose two, two, uh, a two goal lead again. He said his reaction was normal. I think he's just got he's got carte blanche to like weed out the <sighs> the nonsense attitudes that seem to have festered. A, but yeah, fair enough, and that is a big job in itself, and you can't manage to your ability while that exists in your squad for sure. But what it like, what has he done? What in, what's in his resume that suggests that he should be manager? Apart from you know, apparently he's he, you know he's done a lot of work in football, but as a manager, yeah, I I think my gut su- suggests that he hasn't got the soft skills to be a, a, the be- you know a manager of Man United. But I think he has the, the broader str- yeah he has the broader strategic um, experience and vision and. Quite importantly, probably the most important thing, clarity of of what he wants to build a club. And I think that's just that's almost as important as it, is he. You know, is he going to be liked by this group of players? Because I think yeah, he no, can you're create right. that distance. I don't think he should be the manager long term, but he can kind of go. This is what's happening, guys. Feel free to hate me because I'm going upstairs in a minute, and then you bring in whoever it is. Yeah, and they, and you're right. They have the soft skills. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, he's he's there to build a, a vision and a direction at the club that's been lacking for so long. Exactly, someone with a vision that's between the board and and the manager. Something something that, that wasn't there under Solskjaer. Essentially, not that Solskjaer did a bad job, but just that someone in between Woodward when he was there, and and the manager who can run the football side of things. Same thing with Spurs with Paratici. Is it feels so much more cohesive now because. He's doing the football stuff, whereas Daniel yeah. Levy was doing the football stuff. Exactly. Honestly, I yeah. like my my year playing football manager has taught me so much. <laughs> like it's <laughs> and and people will laugh at that, but it's it's so when you can objectively go, okay, what should we do here? We go, well, let's let's figure out what we're like from the top bottom. Like it's it's but it's so obvious. It feels so obvious to me. Um, <laughs> right, Matthew Sergeant Slaughter just said. I don't know if you noticed, or well, I've added this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what you should, I don't know if you noticed. It, is this true? Tongue. This is a rumour, isn't it? There's a, there's no. a... 
This, uh, this is, I don't know, this is, yeah. It's creative. He, well, is it true? Is it not true? It doesn't matter, but the truth is what you choose to believe. He placed his tongue in Cristiano's ear after he came off to calm him down. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and you, that's Come why he's got, that's Come here. Here. And that's why he's got so many members of staff, because, because on the other side... He has someone going shh, 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 because of, because of course Ragnik himself can't shush and tongue, and and there was, there was a third a third guy around the back you wouldn't have seen him because he, he, he likes to keep he you know he likes to stay out the limelight but he just had he put his arm his hands through Ronaldo's legs and just cut both of his balls at the same time mm. and what you also um, did what you also didn't see before that is that he took out some crop preserver and put it onto his hand just before <laughs> from Manscaped as from Manscaped, provided by Manscaped. Yeah. Links in the description. Um, right, football chat is over. Enough of that. If Enough you want, that. if you want your dick to smell like Cristiano Ronaldo's, <laughs> go to Manscaped. Allegedly, um, don't want to get him in trouble, do we? Right, not many quotes of the week last week. Um, apart from me going, you saying you've been reading Darren Brown. I said why. You said what? You got a problem with him? I said he's odd. You and I think you're odd. I went fair enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that was one. Uh, tame anger. So, Flavio, you were talking about your tame anger last week. Uh, you weren't happy with Spurs, and it led you to nearly throw plates into the washing. Um, it, was, it was, yeah, like a, an aggressive gesture rather than throw. Uh, uh, it was just like that. Just like that. Yeah. Um, I thought this was interesting. So this could be a uh, show. Uh, let us know your um, tame anger moments. Uh, Jacques Nail. I also get tamely angry. At Arsenal, the same way Flav does at Spurs. After Forrest beat us, I went to the bathroom, and when I finished, I dropped the toilet seat down, so it made it bang. <laughs> Instead it. of gently putting it down like I usually do, I also lazily throw things that won't break. <laughs> That's good. Uh, 62 <laughs> likes on that. Uh, Metric Fern replied, said, when Chelsea conceded to Everton, I open hand slapped my table in a very wet way, and everyone in the pub laughed at me. <laughs> yeah, that, when you lose control a little bit, you just you lose bang. control a little I'm, bit. I'm, in, yeah, in a public place, that's uh, yeah, that's not on. Uh, and Shinny Bell Sprout, good name. I uh, I break remotes if they don't work for a second after a defeat. I've uh, I've snapped a remote before. Also in your time. Not not for a long time, but yeah, I, uh, yeah, breaking a TV remote over your knee is intensely satisfying. Is it when you're angry? It's it's a, a good reducer. <laughs> but you then, you don't, then you don't have a. You've got to get up. No, no, I guess <laughs> you, got, you can't get up. Can you? You've got to go and buy another one. Oh, you got to do that thing where you got to put you sort of put your hand under the telly, find which dot it is. One's like the brightness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one's the one's the source. <laughs> oh fuck! You got to go through them all again. Uh, yeah, X E X two E X three E X four. Um, yeah. Comments of the week. Last week we were discussing. Flav put out a question there. Big footballing question. What's the difference between Rhodesia and Zimbabwe? <laughs> Robin Zimbabwe. has uh, gave the answer. The reason I re read this out, there were other what people that gave us the answer, but I liked is the end bit of this. Robin, Rhodesia was what Zimbabwe was called under British occupation, changed to the Republic of Zimbabwe in 1979, I think. There is more to it than, than, than that. And other names uh, it was called, but I can't be bothered to type it all. Thank you. Nice. Look, you give us what we needed. That's you what give us what we give me the answer. Don't waffle on. That's our yeah. job. Um, one comment that was good underneath, uh, which I thought was a lovely little bit of extra insight. Matt Illingworth, just for some extra info on this, British uh, colonial, colonial minister, an all-round racist called Cecil Rhodes, founded it and named it after himself. I'd like to know what you guys would call the country you founded. Um. All Cotatopia. Well, what did we call the cult? Uh, Jaffenland. Jaffenland. Yeah. Mm. What would you call it? if you had you found your own land, and all these little little minions came out and went, "Ah, oh, you must be the leader we've been waiting for." What would you call you? You'd be like, "Yes." Now, go. now, now get in a line. <laughs> less, less from you. Get in a line. Get in line. <laughs> what, yeah, just, up and, and down. What would you call the? What would you call the? <laughs> the up and down land. Yeah. Where's Rob Turner? Rob. Just in and, in and out. Clipboard. Let's go. Um, in and out. Okay. What are you calling the country? In and out. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah. Get, guess. Guess who he supports. Let's guess who this person supports. Mm. Stretch. No clues there. He was saying, I think we we're talking about Man City and Salah and drop off and all that. 
Far too many teams are afraid to have a go at City, whereas I feel every team feels like they can get something out of Liverpool, so they fight for it. Who does he support? He thinks Man City <laughs> are getting an easy ride. <laughs> you, there's two ways of looking at this. And it, a very brief football chat here. Mm. The, the City is so good, right, that teams are wary of having a go at them. The answer to that is is is, is be better. It's like if you're a rival of Man City, then you're going to have to be better. Uh, yeah, there's that. there's no truth in that at all. It's just they they manipulate the game so well because how good they are and how well drilled they are, and how well how how much money they've spent on the players that they bought. Right? I, I don't think, think that's. Little, I don't think. A bit, but I don't think it's such a simplistic way to say. Well, teams are trying less hard. They don't feel like they're having a go. That they, they come to Liverpool and feel like they can have a go because you're not exactly what Man City are. Um, yeah, I also that's think not Man why, City that's got... not why you're not not top of the league. Yeah, I think they're, Man City have got better. such a concoction of like they work so hard. They like they the way they work without the ball is is, is madness. And also, I think I guess it's like evolutions of football as well, where I feel like maybe that uber control that Man City have is like. I mean, I guess they've always been dominant, but I think it's, I think it's very. You've got to keep hold of the ball. You've really got to keep hold of the ball these days. They're not. They're just going to win the league so easily, aren't they? I, oh, I, I think it, really. we should actually move to remove Manchester City from the league. Just remove yeah. them. Create some sort of allowed... super league, maybe. Uh, can we create some Man City cracks? I don't know. They feel impenetrable, no, don't they? Yeah, it's impossible. We're not just giving away that. Just you know, on something that's not possible. They're so um, they're so um, they're so fluid. They're like they're like wet cement. So even if you try to make a little crack, they just go, and then it's like smooth again. Let's 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 remove them from the competition, like forcibly. They just say you're not allowed to play anymore. We don't we don't want you. We you we don't want you. And then get rid of them. And then they can sort of, do whatever they want to do. Sort of like uh, do, you're instead of relegated, you're domigated. You're too dominant. So leave, just to make it a bit better yeah. for everyone else. It's too good. It's boring. Uh, Gerard is the type of guy might have a couple of weeks in this. Uh, we're talking about Gerard and his dominance in the bedroom, um, or well, not dominance. He's just sort of just was getting it done so he can get back to the football. He's in a rush to win. Yeah, he's just a winner, isn't he? Um, yeah. Daniel Mandic is Gerard is a, a power top. Um, of course, everyone knows I'm a power bottom, um, but Gerard <laughs> is a power top. He says uh, already he has absolute control by topping course but then he draw his drive adds an extra layer of power that's impossible to comprehend interesting it's, a, it's an energy isn't it yeah um, an energy. yeah yeah that's it it's just a dominant winning energy uber melon yeah. every relationship gerard has is purely transactional set terms and conditions are signed by both parties in advance simply going to the pub with mates involves a pre-signed agreement with who is buying the rounds and when and what drinks those rounds consist of how long they will all be there and what topics of conversation will be he brings a small bell that he rings and it's time to change the topic <laughs> and he's one of those where you feel like when when you're sort of chatting in that topic you just feel a bit rushed because he's yeah. sort of starting to go, you could see him starting to get a bit antsy and starting to reach for the bell. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Point and you start if you let me speak. Panicking. Um, Matthew Sergeant Slaughter, he says, Gerard leaves his slippers on. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Slaughter. That nickname, that is stuck, isn't it? If you uh, want a nickname, become a patron. It's very simple. Hurry, hurry Harry up. Grimes, Harry, Harry, Harry Grimes says, he doesn't take his clothes off, he just pokes it through his flies. <laughs> yeah. Waste of time. Absolute waste of time. Just get out. He's, he's already thought about the abrasive nature of that, but feels it's worth it so he can just carry on being a winner afterwards more quickly. Yeah. Because of course, the zip will aggravate. Um, but he's built up a rough, coarse skin on the side <laughs> of his shaft. So that... Yeah, right at the bottom, around the base. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, best yeah. teams to support. This came from nowhere. I did think this could be a new bit down the road. Is... Um, just just a sort of two sentence pitch on why we should support your team. What what do you what do you have to offer? Let us know. Uh, Leo three one two nine one. I think wow. Fulham would be a lovely little team to support. Good ground by the river every other weekend in a nice atmosphere. Give it a little go in the EPL, but can't imagine it hurts no one knowing they're going to smash it in the championship the following season. Playing great football, wholesome. There's, there's they are element of truth flying, aren't they, Fulham? It's absurd. 
they that that squad. It's t- it's tricky, isn't it? Because obviously you have so much confidence when you're battering teams, but I feel like that that squad would have a real shout staying up. Like it's so easy to sort of go, well, no, it's Fulham; they never stay up. But they're they've just a, they're so far ahead. They're so far ahead got of a good manager as well. Like I know he's he's you know he seemed like he disappeared somewhat, and that the time at Watford and Everton was kind of regrettable, but. He did a really good job at Hull when he was there. And it came over with a great reputation. It just feels like he needed to settle somewhere and to do it in the championship with a squad that, that in a club that's always going to do well in the championship. So you're allowed to be a bit more expressive while you're getting your feet under the table. It seems like a perfect storm at the moment. Um, how how long it is until he snakes off to whatever next club is another conversation. But mm. he um, it, he's got him playing wicked football. And um, I think he's, you know... With, with the kind of goodwill and and um, good energy that's been built up this season, that, that perhaps they will be able to do things next season. In the Prem. That's or it, you but... just create a league between someone. Someone on Twitter he goes, "It's getting silly now. Let's just create an interim league between the two, like a purgatory where Norwich and Fulham just play each other forever." <laughs> the um, the, yeah. My question with it is is like how good because Brentford went up and stopped playing football start being very direct and it's worked for them it's worked for them really really well like how good at football do you have to be at, you're saying wicked football how good at wicked football do you have to be to go up and stay up it's tough I, you got to change a little bit yeah because it, Norwich, it ain't worth Norwich either what do you do I mean you do you do what Frank's done at, at Brentford is you change your system to to suit it but it's it's unfortunate because when you're slapping teams 7-0 and 5-0 or whatever it was the other night they won mm. the, the the change in style that is more effective isn't necessarily that great if you're just drawing or, or sneak, you just sneak above relegation I don't know especially because Fulham have been here and done it it's not like for Brentford's first season so it's everything's exciting Fulham have been up and down for years it's nothing new to their fans coming into the Premier League you know, for a long time they were a main part of the Premier League you know they had five or six seasons didn't even qualify for Europa League once right so yeah. um, it's nothing new to them so they, they, they've got to stay up in some division. but then you look at there are, there are arguments for both but you look at Leeds what they did played great football stayed up um, um, let me stop uh, you there let me stop you there too much football chat Life's okay. unanswered questions answered. Great little um, tete-a-tete with uh, Jamie Evans and Devang Shaw, who is an absolute OG. I think Jamie Evans is as well, actually, um, of the pod. Devang Shah said, non-football chat question I've had. I've never had a hotel room toilet roll that's half empty. So it appears they replace the roll every time. What do they do with the old roll? Surely not just binned. Does the cleaner no. take it home and never purchase his or her own bog roll? Great question. Ten likes on that. Jamie Evans jumped in. He said, spot on. My girlfriend used to clean hotel rooms and she was supposed to bin them. But they just became our main supply for the next few months. Devang Shah replied. He said, why did the supply come to an end one day? Uh, how did it feel returning to purchasing bog rolls? Jamie Evans replied. Just because she stopped working there. The hotel stuff wasn't the best quality, to be fair, so it felt like an upgrade when we did have to finally buy it again. Devang Shah said, any other free perks from working cleaning hotels or any interesting stories worth hearing? Matt Ludlam then jumped in. As a former cleaner, I'd take them out if they were half full, and a staff toilet would have loads of half-filled toilet rolls for the room's staff to use. There you go. Life's unanswered questions answered. Right? Good. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, yeah, people worrying. Hang on, is is the pod gonna dip? Is the pod dipping there? No, I what footballers wangs. <laughs> footballers wangs can happen to you. How to you? It's, look, uh, look at me. I saw look, tells. I've seen tells. Occasionally no, it, happens, it happens, and you know you gotta be strong. Gotta be strong. Um, for those of you breaking your footballing wang cherry, welcome. Um, I don't want it to get too big. <laughs> That's what she said. They uh, nah. Um, but uh, it was there. Nah. It felt okay. Um, yeah. So this is a I once met slash footballers wangs. Tom Godfrey. That's Tom Godfrey. Uh, my experience with David James on holiday three years ago. Please I was in. Hate. Well, let's let's find out. I was in the shower rooms of a hotel. I was washing myself off after a day in the sea. 
Midway through my shower, David James walked in. The shower arrangement was a small room with about 12 shower heads pointing inwards on all four walls. I was alone before he entered the room and David decided to take the shower directly opposite, as if to say, look at me and enjoy the sight of my naked body. <laughs> he had a whopper on him. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. <laughs> he had a what? He had a whopper on him. <laughs> Wh- whopper. <laughs> he had a whopper on him. <laughs> Class of whopper. <laughs> Uh, he had a whop. I'm not whopper. <laughs> he had a whopper on him. So standing there with my inferior appendage, I completely bottled saying anything to him and left the shower shortly after he had entered. Full stop. Beautiful. Love okay. it. More of them. More yeah, of them, please. We'll, we'll, yeah. I mean, I just feel like there's a pattern with this. And, and I'm not sure I'm comfortable with the pattern. I mean, let's see. Let's see if a pattern emerges, and if a pattern emerges, we we'll call it a day. Okay. What would the pattern be? What are you worried about, Jim? Stereotypes. That's what I'm wary of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Look, if if it becomes problematic, then we'll drop it. I'll agree. Okay. Right. <laughs> Whopper. <laughs> uh, right. Creepy, but I didn't what? mean it. Oh yeah. Go on. I just remember last time just. From what I caught of his piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the best. Um, from what I caught of his piece. Uh, creepy, but I didn't mean it. Oh, hang on, sorry, I'm just turning the heater off. Hayden Salter. Um, during the summer, I attended Reading Festival with a group of friends. Oh, so for those of you who don't admit, no, it's not creepy, it's a creepy gym, isn't it? Um, it's creepy moments that you've had that you didn't mean to be creepy. It was a mistake. Uh, During the summer, I attended Reading Festival with a group of friends, both male and female. We were leaving to go see an act. We all got ready, and one of my female friends wore a dress at the festival. Many girls were wearing colourful, swirly dresses. My friend was one of them. After we had got ready, I was speaking to her and noticed that her dress was see-through. However, I was unsure whether to mention this, as I was afraid that maybe this was intentional, and if I brought it up, I may offend her. We left to go see the act, and halfway there, one of her girlfriends noticed the see-throughness of the dress and told my friend. She was horrified, and we went back to the tents for her to put a bra on. Once we got back, she asked, how did no one notice this? How did you let me go out like this? In a joking, but also terrified way. Stupidly... Just as a reaction, I responded, oh, yeah, I noticed. I just didn't say anything. <laughs> just wanted to uh, look. Yeah. Just wanted to look all night. Oh, yeah. yeah that worked, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I noticed. I just didn't yeah, say yeah. anything. I was, then f- I was then filled with regret as I realised how this would have come across. Suddenly, all girls present at this point started saying that I did this on purpose just so I could see her upper chest. <laughs> What's your lower chest? Lower chest. You just didn't want to say boobs, I think. Yeah. Upper chest. Upper chest. <laughs> I tried to explain, but at this point, the damage was done. I've now learnt my lesson. I always tell a woman if I can see her breasts. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel you're sort of, yeah. Is this, that, is great. <laughs> that is a tightrope. See your tits, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's like when you bend down to pick something. Uh, by the way, I can just see all of your tears. Yeah. yeah. Right, uh, yeah. right, guys. Thanks for coming in for the for the meeting. Uh, I know it's short notice. Oh, Janine, I can see your tits. Maybe you want to pop out. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. Yeah, tight rope. It's tight rope. Janine. Janine, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> just before we start, Janine, I can see your tits. <laughs> <Can't remember. laughs> Hello, welcome to, welcome to the meeting, everybody. And... <laughs> Janine, I can see your tits. Yeah. Janine and Sue, I can see your tits. And then if you want to leave them a bit, look, look, have a quick five minutes. Do you know what I mean? You can't win, can you? Oh, that's amazing. Uh, um, tough, tough. I mean, actually, I mean, I don't know if this is a typo or not, but Hayden actually said, I always tell a woman if I can see her beasts. <laughs> but I think he meant beast. breasts. I think he meant breasts. Oh. I think he meant breasts. Um, difficult. What do you do? I mean, it's not difficult. <laughs> if you can see the breasts, you just say nothing and look away. That's easy. 
exactly. Or, or don't don't react in the moment. Or you, if you really want to help, you could go. I don't know if this is on purpose, and if it is, they look fantastic. But your breasts are showing. I don't know, but that that feels creepy. Don't, <laughs> don't whisper yeah, it. That's creepy. Don't whisper. <laughs> <laughs> we got show it even. That's creepy as well. It's just, very difficult. Just yeah. to tell you, I can't see your breasts. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Janine, just a quick one. <laughs> Can I just have five minutes, please, Janine? Come here. I can see full nipple. I don't know if that's your intention. And if it is, that's absolutely fine. That's I your right. I all of you too. <laughs> he reminds me of the guy out of Afterlife. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm imagining him. <laughs> yeah. um, tea and biscuits. Great name. I'll just find it in and wait, wait for it to go hard. Uh, creepy. <laughs> a bit. You can't leave it on that, Jim, what I've just said. You can't just leave it on that, Jim, um, yeah, I've got nothing to add. Though. Um, okay. that's, know, that's, just... that's all you need to do. That's all you need yeah, to do okay. to start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Creepy gym moment. About a year ago, I took my sister shopping for her birthday because that uh, what man knows what makeup to buy their sister. The assistant lady starts pricing up the makeup and guided us to the tills and looks to me and asks if I'm treating the lady. We all share an awkward laugh as we explain that we're siblings, but then I drop a clanger as the lady passes the bag to my sister. Now, she's had the nickname Babs, that's Babs, mm. since she's been born. But the woman who I would normally go shopping with is my girlfriend, Babe, to me. So as Babs holds out her hand to take the bag from the lady, I unfortunately throw my hand in between the exchange and blurt out, I'll take that, babe. <laughs> mm. uh. She was meant... So what was meant as a gesture of me carrying the load <laughs> so she can look at what? <laughs> what she can look at what? <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm laughing at a child. I'm laughing at the word load. <laughs> you oh, are a child. God. Hang on. Hang on. I, look my, I can't read when my eyes like this. Uh, so she can look at what else she can spend my money on, quickly turn into what must have seemed like the lady as an admittance of incest. I was too embarrassed to laugh uh, laugh it off, so I snatched the bag and Babs scurried off out of the gigantic hall of women's products, waiting for the screams of the... <laughs> Stop that Nancy incest, man! <laughs> now, every time my girlfriend drags me along shopping and the idea of a new makeup comes along and she suggests that, that shop, I just tell her that I read that they have a rat problem and that the prices are ridiculous. <laughs> Babe na now sees through the lie and thinks I must have an ex that works there, but really I'm scared I'll be arrested if I step foot in there again. Love mm. the pod, boys. Keep it up. Um, yeah. Nice. Uh, we finish with a bit of Flames advice. All the oldies coming back. Mm. Now, this initially popped on our desk in the mailbag. Um, friend of the show and moist slug, um, Bob Fellows, a.k.a. Freddo, a.k.a. West Brom Bob, um, is having some... I mean, I wouldn't say it's trouble. I think it's an exciting time for Bob. Um, but I wanted to sort of discuss this with the slugs to see how we could solve this and see what kind of tips people had. Um, Bob Fellows... Need some help in the relationship department. I've been chasing this girl for a couple of months after we uh, met through friends and had a magical night talking all night and days after and occasionally making out. But she said she didn't want anything serious. But every time we go out, she just hangs around me, which is fine by me. But the following day, she doesn't acknowledge it. It's happened five times, so... Do I say how I feel, which is she is my oxygen and I would go to war for her or just keep riding the train until it stops? Um, yeah. yeah, we said we'd move this on. Um, Catherine in the uh, chat says, oh, God, Freddo time. Um, Flav, thoughts? Um, you can tell you can you can you can tell her how you feel, I guess. Um, or West Brom Bob um, sent me. Sorry, West Brom Bob sent me pictures of her. By the way, um, I mean, what? What is? <clears throat> is that appropriate? Well, I mean, yeah. No, I'm not going to show them. Um, <clears throat> I mean, show me. But yeah, I, guess I don't know how I forward it to you. I'll send it to you later. Don't worry, no, she, don't, she seems don't like she I, seems I'm like not, a I... charming, charming lady, and she seems draped over him in the picture. 
That's, it's that's all I've it's said. It's fine. It's like it's not. It's up to. Her. It's it's fine. If if for her, she's not behaving. She's not behaving in a way that's. Uh, it's completely acceptable what she what she's doing. Um, she's made it clear to you what <laughs> she wants, right? So, and if she's being up front, then that's all she can be. It's not like she's playing you, is she? Sorry, I'm just laughing so, because Harry Grimes has just said just a couple of siblings, <laughs> just a couple of siblings sharing the load. Mm. Um, See, so it is funny. Um, yep. So, yeah, look, there's a couple of things I'd like to sort of discuss here. First of all, Magical Night talking all night and uh, and the days after. Feels like there's a connection there. Nice. And the, But the, I was initially like, uh-oh, friend zone. But then making out occasionally. Yeah. And every time they go out, she just hangs around me. But she's also said that she doesn't want anything serious. Um, yeah. I mean, can, that's completely Can fine, he move the it? needle? Is there a way of moving the needle here with a few power moves? I, th- I think we I think we go, we, we open the file, make our way through, find the perfect power move to move this on. That's what I think we should be doing here. Okay. I think there's a few weeks in this. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's look, I think you know. Yes, he is saying that she is my oxygen, and he would go to war for her. But I think in that sentence itself, there shows a, a level of awareness that this is all just bloody good fun. Um, is that so? What I would like the comments to do is provide power moves for West Brom Bob to utilize here. Power moves that 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 are completely you know in keeping with the current. Environment mm. and 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 good will towards women. What I would say, one gentle bit of advice, just a thought before the power moves are ensued. That makes sense. Um, stop wearing football shirts to nightclubs. That's that would be a great just, start. Just a note. Just a note from me. It's only with your own name on the back. Yeah, yeah. So with Fredo on the back. Just a note. <laughs> <laughs> just just a note, Bob. All right. We love you. We're excited for you. This is great. You know, and something's Catherine's going on. Saying, something's happening. Catherine's just put something in the comments here. So there was an update last night. A bloke tried to dance with her and he threw an overhand. What? Oh, my good Lord. Well, that is a cliffhanger. That is just perfect. So Catherine Heap, the queen of the slugs, says there was an update last night. A bloke tried to dance with her and he threw an overhand. I would like a full debrief of last night please bob and we will discuss it next week fantastic see just needed a reset didn't we just needed a reset <laughs> indeed uh, right um any final thoughts Flav, before we leave no no just uh thought was great until next monday when undoubtedly will be furious again but uh yeah no it's um i love you all thanks for listening thanks for watching Great stuff. And as we have said last couple of weeks, just hurry up now. Um, you're wasting my time and yours by not becoming a patron. We have 300 patrons now. Come on, the lads. Good chat this week. Shit. Chat about a lot of stuff, actually. Yes. Uh, yeah, it was good. So, yeah, come and get involved. You know, don't be a dick. Just get on with it. And then we can um, stop stop pushing the patron, basically. Um, for less than a London pint. Um, yep. Right. Um, have a great weekend, guys. Enjoy yourselves. Cheers. See you next time. Bye.